I myself uh, in my school level I was also in uh, martial arts and I do play and sing uh, and also I was into a uh, little bit of recitation or uh, elocution all of these things however I couldn't pick my niche so one you have to create your own niche see where you are what you want to do where your passion is what you are inclined to do try out don't just fiddle with everything as you gain proficiency more and more and more your interest becomes greater and greater Hello sir I am Nandini Sahu and I'm currently a first year BCom honor student in SRCC and I've traveled a lot of places before ending up in SRCC and I've seen that people around me they are good at many things like one person may be good at field x and another person may be good at field y however i am just average at both the fields and um, i kind of have this inferiority complex that i'm not great uh, like them in any of the fields and i don't have a particular niche so how do i tackle this inferiority complex and how do i find the the motivation to be great at my particular niche look all of us we all have certain hidden talents maybe you can call it natural talents but certain we have inclinations to go one side now all of us cannot do everything let me put it this way well unlike there is a belief everybody can do everything incorrect not true you see a fish cannot climb a tree <laughs> can she a fish cannot climb a tree similarly a, a ostrich runs at 90 miles an hour it can run 90 miles an hour can other birds run like that no no but the eagle can go above the clouds but can ostrich do it no they can't do it even if they want to do it they can't do it so keep in mind all of us cannot do everything okay this is nature this is how we are created that way so one you have to create your own niche see where you are what you want to do where your passion is what you are inclined to do try out and once you figure that out but do it don't just fiddle with everything keep one thing in mind some of the greatest performers today were the greatest disasters yesterday when they started so they didn't know that they could do it i didn't know i could speak in public in fact when the people see me today speaking in public, they think, oh, he must be a prefect in the class. Oh, this guy must be a great debater. It is inborn. Answer is no. I was the back bencher trouble in the front benchers. In my eighth grade, our six or seven subject, I failed in all except one. So my principal called me and said, you are paying too much attention on one subject. Now, interestingly, out of 28 kids, I was number 27 because 28 was absent. And then I failed in my 10th. But then in my higher secondary, there were only three people in arts who got first division. I was one of them. Look at this. A year later, I repeated my class. But one year later, there were only three people. So what I'm sharing with you is... I was always interested in sports and that's what I've been doing all my life. I used to jump off the school walls and run off from there, watch movies. That's it. I'm not advocating that, by the way. But the bottom line is figure out where you want to be. Figure out where you want to be. And there are some people who try 25 things. They don't fit anywhere. Look, somewhere, sometimes you have to create a commitment and move forward. Don't dibble, dabble, dibble, dabble, dibble, dabble. There are many people who are great starters, but they're never good finishers. I repeat, many people are great starters. I know in childhood, I want to learn. I wanted to learn music. I want to learn singing. I want to learn martial art. I wanted to learn everything, but couldn't do all that. And also I'm guilty myself. I had the habit of starting this, leaving here, starting this, leaving here, starting this, leaving here. You never become proficiency, proficient like this in any field. And I'll tell you one thing. 
the, as you gain proficiency more and more and more, your interest becomes greater and greater. I know a friend of mine, his daughter today dances so beautifully, it's unbelievable. And she was even offered at the Bollywood. But when she was learning, many times this girl didn't want to go for practice. And mother literally pushed her and once in a while slapped her too. You have to go. And she did. And gradually, as her proficiency increased and increased and increased, her interest in the whole thing became greater and greater and greater. So now you start gaining happiness, pleasure out of the same thing. I share with you my own case. I was unwell for a while during the COVID. And then I started learning karaoke music. Initially, I mean, I was embarrassing. But today, it's not all that bad. I think people say I am fairly good, much better than many people. But uh, it took me time, about a year and a half. But I made sure this time, I said, I will not leave it. I must go on and on and on and on. And that's how it is. All I can say is one thing to you. Once a great violinist finished a concert and a lady from the audience came up and said to Fritz Kreisler, Mr. Kreisler, I would give my life to play violin the way you do. And Kreisler said, ma'am, I did and you won't. See, if I don't practice for a month, my audience can tell the difference in my performance. If I don't practice for a week, my family can tell the difference in my performance. And if I don't practice for a day, I can tell the difference in my own performance. So look, no matter what you decide, give it your 200%. And gradually as you go along, you will find your natural way to move forward. That's all. Thank you so much, sir. So, like, as you said that, you know, you wanted to learn martial arts and you uh, tried your hands at karaoke also. So, uh, like, I myself, uh, in my school level, I was also in uh, martial arts and I do play and sing uh, and also I was into a uh, little bit of, you know, recitation or uh, elocution, if you say like that. But I tried my hands at all of these things. However, I couldn't pick my niche. Like, and then I also studied, like, uh, my, I, I left all of those and I focused uh, purely on my academics so that I get the college that I want. And even after getting the college that I, uh, I get the, I dreamt of, I just, I still cannot find my niche. Like, even if I tried my hands on so many things. Look, let me share. I can only talk about myself on this. Right from my school days, I used to get into fights with kids. And uh, invariably, I used to fight against bullies. So they used to cluster together 5, 10, 15 people together. And they used to come and beat me 15 people. Then my second thing was one by one, I used to pick each one and the beat hell out of each one. This is what my life has been all through. And right from that period onwards, I always wanted to learn martial arts so I can handle myself properly. And some of my colleagues today are all black belts. But gradually from my white belt, yellow, and I've gone into my green belt, I now it was ready for my brown belt. But I dropped at that time. But you know, even today at the back of my mind, at my age currently today, one thing that keeps bugging me is, I said, I must get my black belt. I must get my black belt. I must get back into my martial art. Now, am I going to go into tournaments? No, 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 I'm not interested. I just want to go on a little further because primarily I feel comfortable that I should, if I am on my street, on my street, my kids are there, my daughters are there, my wife is there, at least I can handle two, three people by myself. Even today I can. My bottom line is that is what my interest is. So I still have in mind to go for my black belt. Why? I feel so passionate. Now, physically, I do get tired. Am I able to do the same thing what I used to do when I was 35 and 45? No, no, I couldn't. 
And I remember I started martial art again second time when I was 45. And these young kids, 18, 19 year old kids, they made you spar with them. When you spar with them, these young kids, they're enthusiastic, the reflex are moving faster. So they used to hit hard somewhere in them. So one day I went to my teacher and I said, Sensei, do you think this is the right way, age? These are young kids. And uh, yeah, I mean, is this the right age to continue with this? You know what he said to me? I bet I cannot forget. It was so profound. He said, Kerasan, <clears throat> what these kids have in a what these kids have in age young, you have an experience. You have an experience and they don't. As somebody said, youth is always wasted. Youth is always wasted. By the time they good, have good sense, they have no more youth. It's all gone. So youth is always wasted. So he says, Kera son, don't worry. What they have in age, they don't have an experience. You have an experience. What you can knock them off. And he says, if I have to ever choose, I will always choose experience over intelligence. He said, don't worry, carry on. That said, man, I must go on. Thank you so much, sir. It was really enlightening. Winners don't do different things. They do things differently. Folks, if you like, please subscribe and follow.